Pat McAfee has joined the party. See, Pat McAfee, I've talked about it many, many times. Pat McAfee does his own production for ESPN. Pat's dad told me their equipment was better than ESPN's over here at the Thunder Dome, which is, oh, I don't know, a mile and a half away. And Pat said, you want me, you got me, but you're going to have to pay me, and I'm going to have to have freedom. Freedom to speak, and if you don't like it, fine. But if you do like it and you hire me, don't rat me out, or I'm going to get you out of here Norby Williamson style, or I'm going to call you out as a lawyer who's gumming up the negotiations between ESPN, Pat McAfee, and game day. I love it. Well, Pat's back. Pat rips the opening ceremony. A lot of white dudes are afraid to rip the opening ceremony of the Paris Olympics. Actually, we're not. We're very excited to rip the opening ceremony, specifically the mocking of the Last Supper, which, by the way, the old bigot in the middle who portrayed herself as Jesus Christ is now trying to sue people because people have been mean to her online. People should be mean to her online, saying the Olympics should only revolve around sport. Oh, my God, did McAfee actually say that? How is this possible? How could he? Oh, my God. We must see gay little guys' testicles out. Well, McAfee says the Olympics should revolve around sport and not artistic expression that's used to create division between people who just want to watch sports. Oh, geez. No, really, I want to watch some fat lady with a chalice holding it up and a bunch of people depicting the Last Supper and then being too chicken shit to say, yeah, we were depicting the Last Supper. We were mocking Christianity. They instead said, no, it's a party of Dionysus, dummy. Yeah, okay. Hey, look, this is the same thing as that maniac press secretary telling us these are all cheap fakes. Or Kamala Harris telling us, oh, yeah, yeah, Biden's fine. Yeah, he's good. Don't worry about it. Or the media telling us that, Camilla Harris is a some type of savior. Camilla lot. I'd say more like Camilla toe. But anyway, the word on the street is everybody was tired of that. Even people that don't get tired of anything were like, yeah, that's kind of stupid. Yeah, that opening ceremony is flying the face of billions of Christians. Well, here's a Mac if he had to say about it. There's a lot of people saying they're not going to watch the Olympics. Oh, yeah, what? a lot of people. Because no. the opening ceremony. Oh, yeah. Now... I learned a lot about a man named Thomas Jolly, okay, over the weekend. I think we all did. And the one thing that I did not read or see is that he cares at all about sports. So I think that's the biggest thing. Like, we need people that love sports being a part of sports happenings. Whenever sports litigation is happening in government, like trying to change the future of sports completely, we need sports people Mm -hmm. around. Whenever we have the biggest platform for sports and competition happening once every four years, we need some sports people at least there to say, hey, we, this is a celebration. This is a. I understand the history of France had to be told. However, it was told. You do what you got to do. But you got a Bruce Statue of Liberty in there. I don't know much about the history of France. I know there's one particular day on a beach that took place that led to a lot of things. So I didn't respect and appreciate that. But there's a lot of people that are saying, "Hey, what Thomas Jolly put together was incredibly disrespectful." And I think the- that is uh, yeah, certainly oh, yeah. a way to view things. Uh, that is a way to take it. And there is a lot of people who have said that, and for good reason. And I have no idea how any of these things are the start of the Olympics or to announce that the Olympics are taking place. It was a form of artistic expression that was paying trip, whatever. We just want it to revolve around sport, and we can't have the opening ceremony be a reason why people won't watch These athletes who have sacrificed everything about their lives to be great at something and only get to experience and celebrate once every four years. Uh, He's not wrong in any way, shape, or form. Not wrong. I was watching Bill Burr yesterday. You know who Bill Burr is? He had a hilarious line. He said, you know, the biggest scam ever is putting – Normal looking, I wouldn't look twice, women on billboards replacing hot, gorgeous women. And it continued. You got the big in up in there, serving up whatever. And she's all mad. He's right. Why divide? Why divide? Well, we're showing Francis artistic creativity and it's open for all people. Uh uh-uh, it's the Olympics. It's not open for all people. Elite athletes competing like crazy people. People that do things that none of us could do. Getting up at 5 in the morning every day. You ever see a swimmer's workout? When I was playing basketball in Indiana, 
the bat, the uh, swimming coach at Indiana, Doc Councilman's a legend. Won like ten straight national championships. The greatest program maybe in the history of sport, along with Hobie Billingsley, the diving coach. They just won everything for years. Well, they had a machine that swimmers used every day, some kind of weight workout machine. When we were being punished in Indiana for missing a class, we had to go on that machine one day. Swimmers are the toughest dudes ever. You ever see these wrestlers, these runners, these bi- – what are you talking about? I don't need to see some fat chick with a chalice or some uh, drag queen – acting like she's sexy. I don't need to see any of it. Nobody does. It's the Olympics. It's a celebration of extraordinary performance, not a celebration of your diversity in France. Look how diverse we are. Yeah, you ain't diverse at all. You're frauds and you're chicken shit. That's my opinion on it. But anyway, I don't need it. I'm with McAfee. I want to celebrate the greatness of the athletes. I want to celebrate Simone Biles doing things in the air that I can't count. Last night, I watched the men's gymnastics. I don't know what the hell they were doing, and they kept sticking the landing. I want to listen to Rowdy Gaines call a swimming uh, race. Unbelievable back and forth down the pool. I want to weep because Lily King lost by .01 out of a gold medal, out of a medal of being on the stand, America's most patriotic athlete. I want to watch Team USA in any sport that they're participating in, from team handball to women's hoops. I do. I don't need to hear about, oh, my God, we're so diverse. Look at us. Look at us. Look at my penis is out. Oh, aren't I brave? Oh, my God, you're so brave because you pulled your testicle out. Oh, my God, we got drag queens. Isn't that so cool? No, there's nothing cool about it. Sick, it's perverted. Let's move it along. Sorry. You don't like it? You don't like it. But I'm with McAfee. Why are we taking away from the great athletic accomplishments of athletes and moving it to the perverse? There's no reason. There's no reason at all, except this is what the world has become. We cater. And now, unbelievably, with all this weird crap Kamala Harris and all these clowns are doing at the White House, they're calling J.D. Vance a veteran, a wife, uh, has a wife, couple kids. They're calling him weird. No, you're not weird. Why is everything wholesome gone? I asked this the other day, and I ask it again. Why is everything wholesome gone? Why is the sanctity? It's not a sanctity, but it's wholesome for swimmers to get up and work their ass off, runners to get up and run their ass off, boxers to get up and train like crazy people. Simone Biles, I don't know what she's done, but it's awesome. And same with her teammates. And same with LeBron James, who sucked every, literally every ounce of his talent out of his body. That's wholesome. That's American. It's not just American. It's sport. But we got to watch flying turds. We got to see testicles out. We got to see Biggins reenacting The Last Supper. It's disgusting. It's sick. It's perverse. But it's the way the world's going, and it ain't stopping. We got an election coming up where all that crap is celebrated over our veterans. Think about that for just a minute. A veteran running for vice president is considered weird. While transvestites hopping along on the White House lawn, taking their shirts off, uh, sex from behind in chambers by Democratic congressmen's aides is considered normal. Think about that. Pete Buttigieg wearing fake tits with milk in it and milk in a baby is considered normal. Stop it, stupid. Wake up. Good for McAfee. Man. The opening ceremony did ruffle ruffle some feathers, and I love it. You know why? Because the Olympics are the biggest stage in the world, and us queer people have always been in the audience of other people's lives and achievement. And it is time that we're welcome into this space. You've never not been welcome. What's wrong with you? Greg Laganis has been welcomed forever. So some drag queen's mad. I mean, it's an absolute honor to perform in front of billions of people around the world, celebrate our Olympics, and remember the ones that had their feathers rougher, seeing queers on their scene. We ain't going nowhere. Well, great. Nobody wants you to go anywhere. Everybody wants you to celebrate. Stay out of sport. I don't give a damn who you're having sex with. I mean, you do. You want to tell everybody who you're having sex with. You want everything handed to you. I don't give a damn who you're having sex with. Just let's make this about sport. Go make whatever Pride Month or whatever queer thing there is about you. Now, you ain't going nowhere. Neither are we. I mean, what, what, why divide? Why not bring together? Now, I'm just saying, I'm with McAfee on this. I am. I'm with McAfee. This is about great athletes 
doing things that normal people cannot do. And there's no reason to divide. I don't care about having gay athletes. I don't care about having gay performers. Why the Last Supper? Why put it in front of billions of people, a question whether or not you're even mocking it? You wouldn't do that to Islam. There's not a chance in hell you would. You wouldn't do that to any orthodox religion. But you do it to Christianity because there's an attack on Christianity right now. And good for this lady or guy or whatever the hell she is. You're not going anywhere. I don't care who you're having sex with. I guess I'm supposed to. I guess we're all supposed to. I want to see in the Olympics great athletes competing like hell. I want to see in the national NCAA women swimming, I want to see women. In the men's, I want to see men. It's just what I want to see. I mean, I'm right, <laughs> although I am. No, I'm with McAfee. Why divide? Why not bring people together through sport? What the hell was that? Hey, Dan Lebetard calls <laughs> – this is so funny – Dan Lebetard calls LeBron James today's Ali. That's right. And says that an older LeBron was holding the flag for his country while an older Michael Jordan was shooting jumpers on the Wizards. Here's Dan Lebetard. I don't think we understand how unfair we've been to excellence during an era. Over the last 20 years, social media mocking people. He was always chasing Michael, always chasing Michael. To see him holding that American flag... And that flag means something different than it did 20 years ago, but the thing holding it doesn't. It's still excellence for 20 years. Today's Ali. And you know how hard it is to type him, t- tackle Michael Jordan as America's ultimate winner? Not even Brady could do it because he wasn't first. We have watched for 20 years somebody who holds that American flag in the middle of the Olympics. And once upon a time, right, because we don't treat Team USA this way. We don't treat anymore what it is that we're watching of this team and make it feel like it did when it was Jordan and Barkley. But imagine Michael Jordan at the end of everything, not shooting jumpers for the Wizards, older than any athlete out there and still deserving of holding the flag. How emotional you would have been watching it because you're so much nicer to him. Yeah, I think that's crap. You're not nicer to him. You respect him more. It's not about being nice. It's about respect. Look, LeBron James has faked racism. He's faked uh, reading. He's faked being a political activist. He's knelt in front of the flag, and it's all fake. But because we live in an era where, you know, diversity strikes and wins over what you've actually done, uh, you hold the flag. Yeah, great. But let's not talk about being nice. Let's talk about being respect. People respect how Michael Jordan went about his business. People do not respect how LeBron's gone out his business. Hey, Lebatar and others, what happened with that racist stuff at his house, allegedly? You know, he's made up stuff. He's been a front man. It's not about like. It's about respect. A lot of people don't like Michael Jordan. A lot of people don't like anybody. But the fact of the matter is, it's about people don't respect LeBron James. They don't believe him to be authentic. People believe Michael Jordan to be totally authentic. People believed Muhammad Ali to be totally authentic. Totally. So while I get it, you know, the left wants to kiss LeBron James's ass. We all understand that there's a segment of ESPN that moves over here that anybody that does anything even remotely left, they get their praise. And Lebetard was that guy. He was kind of the ringleader of Izzy Gutierrez or what, uh, Sarah Spain and Mina Kimes and all this little group. The fact of the matter is there's nothing to do with liking. It has to do with respect. And Lebetard doesn't understand that. He's never been in sports. His fat ass has sat behind a chair or behind a pen and talked about others participating in sports. But everybody that's actually been in sports, whether it's a coach or a player, understands liking doesn't factor in. Respecting factors in. And frankly, if you put a real poll, a real poll up, who do you respect more, LeBron James or Michael Jordan? It would be 100 to 1. Michael Jordan. Now, of course, guys that don't know, well, I like LeBron James. He's so funny. No, uh-uh. No. Anybody with any knowledge at all understands this. Look, Muhammad Ali was 100% authentic. Muhammad Ali threw his gold medal 
in the river. Muhammad Ali faced real racism, not imaginary racism at his house. John Thompson style. John Thompson, the legendary coach at Georgetown, was going to get fired. And then he wrote uh, racial slurs on the court. Uh, next thing you know, the school, even back in the 80s, felt like they couldn't fire him, or 70s, felt like they couldn't fire him because it would get out, make the school look bad. Thompson stayed. Thompson's son tried it at Ball State. Didn't work. Other people have tried it, including LeBron James. Didn't work. People are like, where's your camera? You live in a mansion. And that went away quickly, and James survived. I mean, just stop it. There's no comparison between Muhammad Ali not going to the war and LeBron James lying repeatedly about reading books about racism in his life. Just stop. Just stop. It's not about liking. Not even a little bit about liking. It's not. It's, it's about respect. And LeBron James has about one-tenth, if not one one-hundredth, of the respect Michael Jordan has. Speaking of respect, I respect the living hell out of Patrick Mahomes. I do. Patrick Mahomes is a big team first guy. He says he's not underpaid, not focused on money, as a bunch of these lesser quarterbacks line up for cha-ching. Tua actually got paid like $50 million. Tua. Tua can't throw the ball from here to that wall. Hasn't won squat since the second half of the Georgia game. I think it was Georgia in college. But yet they all line up to pay Tua. Kirk Cousins has been paid and paid and paid and paid and paid. And yes, while well, Kirk, I do like that for you. You haven't won squat. But here comes Mahomes. Mahomes watches all these guys, so you know what happens. What happens? Well, easy. He's going to be asked, yo, Patrick, you're not paid as much as these clowns. Well, Gibbs, Mahomes said this. I know every time a contract comes up, everybody looks at my APY, average per year, and everything like that. I'm doing pretty well myself. For me, just about going out there trying to win football games, trying to make money for my family, at the end of the day, I feel like I'm doing a great job that. Well, that's what I talk about all the time, about quarterbacks that win championships and are at the next level. you got to have certain things. An unmatched commitment, Andrew Luck didn't have. Not his fault. It's how he was born, I guess. Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, uh, Joe Montana, Peyton Manning. These guys all had it. I kind of think Lamar Jackson has it, but I'm not sure. But you know I love Lamar Jackson. I have a weird thing that I love Lamar Jackson. Anyway, Mahomes is in that class. You know, it's kind of funny. Back in the day, guys like Dean Smith, Bob Knight, the legendary coaches, nobody knew what they made. Then a younger group, Calipari and all these guys came on, and everybody knew what they made because they wanted everybody to know what they made. Mahomes doesn't care. Mahomes better than all these guys. Knight and Smith were better than all those guys. But Mahomes is like those guys. Smith, Knight, Cheney, Thompson. They didn't care. They didn't want you to know. They just went out and balled. They just went out and coached. They just went out and got their team right. And that's how I view Mahomes. Tua's like Calipari and all these guys now that – negotiate, want contracts, tell you how rich they are, act like they're so rich. I kind of like it. I do. Actually, I really like it. It's one of the reasons Mahomes is probably my favorite athlete right now. I really like Caitlin Clark, and I'm kind of big on Tyrese Halliburton after going to a couple of Pacer games. But I got to tell you, Patrick Mahomes is somewhat it for me. I've already had enough of Anthony Richardson here in Indy until he actually does something. But Patrick Mahomes, to me, I think we do a great job of managing my money to be able to pay me a lot of money and keep a good team around me. I know we're kind of restructuring it a couple times and got the cash flow up to cer- in certain spots in certain years. It's about having a good dialogue, good communication with the front office and ownership. We've done that here. And as we've been able to allow me to be a highly paid guy while at the same time building a great team around me. Man, that's so odd for most athletes, isn't it? I mean, when I think about guys like Tua or I think about Kirk Cousins or I think about some of these quarterbacks, 
I don't blame anybody for going to get $50 million. Now, I would say nobody's worth $50 million. Well, the owners are getting the money. Owners put up the money. Shut up. Anyway, I don't think anybody's worth that much money. $4 million a month? Come on. I mean, would I take it? Yeah, I'd take one month's worth. But look, it is the world that we live in. And I love the fact that Mahomes and Brady and Manning and all the guys that are legendary players, quarterbacks, care about winning, care about putting a team first. You think Justin Herbert does? Child, please. You think Tua does? Child, please. You think any of the – I don't even know if Lamar Jackson does, and you don't have an unhealthy respect for him. But I know Mahomes does. I knew Andrew Luck was going to retire early because he didn't have one of the criteria. You could tell. I could tell. He didn't love football. He wasn't maniacal about it. He could love football, but you got to be maniacal. To get to that level, you got to work out wide receivers at 6 in the morning right after they're drafted before they go to their press conference like Peyton Manning did. And you don't have to do it publicly. There doesn't have to be a big article about, well, you know, Slap Dick Johnny brought all the wide receivers down to Cabo. They got hammered and threw a few passes in the sand while they hit on every woman in sight. Lawsuits coming. You don't need to do that. Not at all. Are you crazy? No, you need to be maniacal. You need to be team first. And team first could never be expressed more than taking less money or restructuring less money. And man, respect, yo, to Patrick Mahomes. Big respect. All right, usually I'm sure where I land on this. Usually I'm sure I land that if Kendrick Perkins says it, it's really stupid. But Kendrick Perkins, well, let's hear from the big stupid here about Steve Kerr embarrassing Jason Tatum by sitting him the entire game during Team USA's blowout of Serbia. Let's hear from the big stupid. In the game, well, it's a positionless sport when you talk about the game of basketball. When you talk about a guy like Jason Tatum, he's not nailed down to one position. Jason Tatum is a versatile player, meaning if you want him to play the point, he could play the point. If you want him to play the two, he could play the two. If you want him to play the wing, the three, the four, the five, whatever you want him to play, he's 6'9 with a versatile package on both ends of the floor. Jason Tatum, the last time the uh, Team USA won the goal, Kevin Durant was the best player. You know who was the second best player? It was Jason Tatum. Jason My Tatum. thing is, if you're Steve, okay, if you're Steve Kerr, and Steve Kerr called out all his accolades and what this man has accomplished. You know what Jason Tatum is going to bring to the table. You do not disrespect him and embarrass him the way that you did. Because in this world today, we live in a world of social media. We can't run from it. We can't hide from it. It's right there in front of our face. And nowhere in here are you going to tell me that Jason Tatum wasn't embarrassed, the brand of looking on social media or hearing about it, because at the end of the day, yeah. I don't understand why everybody's got to yell. I mean, first and foremost, now the big stupid makes a pretty good comment there, because here's the deal: in the world of social media, Jason Tatum, every game he goes to is going to be ridiculed. And really, you know, people say, "Well, that doesn't matter." Eh, it kind of does. You know, you're coming off winning an NBA title. You've elevated the Boston Celtics, a franchise that really is difficult to elevate. You've done an incredibly good job of representing yourself, your school, your family, whatever. Jason Tatum's been nothing but a class act, whether it was videos from him and Keith Kachuk's son or whether it was at Duke or in the NBA. He's been great. And now you got to deal with stupid. you got to deal with stupid. Jason Tatum, you're no guy. I mean, you're going to have to listen to it every road game that you go to, and that's really not great. Now, you can say, hey, get over it. You're making X million of dollars, and I would understand that, and I'd probably say you're right. But the fact of the matter is, because of Steve Kerr being a dumbass, and I got to tell you, as a coach, he's being a dumbass. Like, as a coach, you know exactly who's in the game. And don't tell me Tatum should have gone in the last three minutes of a blowout. That, nah, uh-uh. I mean, that's for the Stephen A. Smiths of the world. Actually, that's for me, my sophomore year of the world. I was hoping just to get in the game. But the fact of the matter is simply this. Jason Tatum got screwed by, by a really stupid Steve Kerr who should know better. And Perkins, although just ridiculous in his delivery as always, uh, he's kind of right. 
Like, I'm not big on this whole disrespect, man. Everybody do Paul George, they only offered me $200 million. That's disrespect. Oh, shut up, all you idiots. But the truth of the matter is Steve Kerr was stupid, really stupid. Was he disrespectful? No. He's just stupid. I mean, as a coach, you sit there and you know. You know who to get in the game. You know who you're not getting in the game. So there must be something there, and I said this before. There's, some, there's a backstory. Now, the big stupid doesn't know about this because he's the big stupid. But the truth of the matter, there's always a backstory. He didn't just get stupid talking about Steve Kerr. Uh-uh. There's a backstory here. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's Nike. Who knows? He came out, Jason Tatum did, if you're a conspiracy theorist, and he defended his teammate's rant, Jalen Brown, about not being on the team and Nike having a hand in it. Maybe Nike got to Kerr. Who knows? I mean, I believe this. Everybody that is as staunch to the left as Steve Kerr is up for sale, 100% up for sale. I mean, if you want to put it in political terms, look how up for sale the Biden entire family is. And the other guy, Trump is a billionaire, isn't taking a dime, can't be bought because he's got more money than the people trying to buy him. If you're on the left, you're for sale. I assume that somehow, some way, Kerr was compromised because no coach that's coached in the NBA for 10 minutes is dumb enough to do what he just did. And he's absolutely right. Jason Tatum is going to have to answer for this, and he already has. It's ridiculous. Uh, Bill Simmons is predicting something a little bit wacky. Bill Simmons predicts an alternative league to the WNBA. He thinks an ABA-type league is going to form. There ain't enough players, baby. I'll just say that right now. There ain't enough players to house one league, much less two leagues. What if there's an alternative league? This is how the ABA started, right? The NBA players underpaid, didn't make enough money, didn't really have some basic labor stuff in their favor until they unionized in 64. ABA came in 67. Guess what? All of a sudden, all this is changed. Salaries went up by four more times, and then in the 70s, all of a sudden, NBA players were worth three times what they used to be worth. Yeah, I don't know, man. The thing that I think is going to happen is I think someone's going to try and form an alternative league. Oh, someone's going to do that. Because it's not like all these WNBA players are tied to their teams forever, right? So you could start a league. You'd be like, you know what? We have more money over here. That would seem to be the move. Well, I'm not going to say no. Money talks, BS walks. And it, let's say a guy like Elon Musk, Donald Trump, you know, Bezos, decided to start a league. And said, look, we're going to do what the USFL tried to do. We're going to buy stars. Trump was involved in that. There's just not enough good players. I mean, there's enough, when your star player, one of your star players, Angel Reese, can't get a shot off and has to like throw the ball off the backboard to get a double-double, and uh, <laughs> Caitlin Clark is so much different than every other player where if you went to an eighth-grade boys game, she'd just be an average player. There just aren't enough good players. I'm sorry, there's just not. Now, you may think there is. You may want there to be. You may believe the explosion, but really there weren't enough good players in the ABA back in the day. But the ABA caught lightning in a bottle because they got a guy named Julius Irving. And once Julius Irving, who everybody knew was not good, great. In fact, most would tell you that at that time, other than the bigs, because there were a ton of bigs, that Irving was the best basketball player in the world. They got him, then they got some others, and then they got strong enough out of few different positions, meaning teams, to go ahead and consolidate in 76. I remember it like it was yesterday. I got to tell you, I'm not saying that Bill Simmons is wrong. I'm not saying that there won't be another startup. Probably will. But I am saying there just ain't enough players, and frankly, there ain't enough interest. Caitlin Clark goes down. Hey, look yesterday. The least attended, least watched women's game in years. You put Kate and Clark in that game, it's the most attended, most watched game in years. All right, I love Elon Musk. Yeah, 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 bite me. But Elon Musk in 1968 did this. Shut up. Just shut up. I like Elon Musk. He's a billionaire. He's a tech titan. He's known for trolling people on X, and he is legitimately hilarious. This time, he takes aim at California Governor Gavin Newsom. 
mocking him with a truly incredible tweet. Newsom, the man who actually had to apologize for having sex with his campaign manager's wife, manipulating a voice in an ad like this should be illegal. I'll be signing a bill in a matter of weeks to make sure it is. Here's Musk's response. I checked with renowned world authority professor <laughs> suck on these nuts, and he said parody is legal in America. <laughs> suck on these nuts. 